Now, every year, thousands upon thousands of people come to the Balmoral Show. This year, they've let me out of the studio. I've come along to find out why the show is so popular and to meet some of the people involved. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Balmoral Show 2019. Just tell us why you're here at the Balmoral Show today. Uh, it's my first time up this year now. Um, just I've never been up, and I always wanted to bring a ball up to it. So it's uh, our first time here, and we have a red rosette there. So it's a good day so far. Okay. Now tell us about the animal behind us here. She's absolutely massive. Yeah, he's a big bull now. He's about 17, 18 months old, and about 750 kilos. So he's he's not light for his age. <laughs> um, he's. Off his mother has bred champions. His full brother was champion in Tullamore two years ago, so it's a good, consistent bloodline. Okay, and I see plenty of animals are going out into the arena there this afternoon. Will he be going out in the arena as well? Yeah, he'll be back out now for the male championship, so we'll see how he gets on in that. Hopefully, he'll go well. All right. So, what's the kind of long term plans for these animals then? Uh, the plan for him will be to sell them to a farmer to use as a breeding bull. So, what exactly makes a good bull then? Uh, basically, just. I am big on correctness of legs. They have to have an animal of that size needs good legs to walk around with. And after that, everything comes next, style and length and size. But if you haven't legs, you've nothing. So what brings you to the Balmoral Show then today? Well, I'm here to try and win. <laughs> but very likely not. No, here to show. Yeah. And are you a regular visitor here to the show? Oh, wow. I've been going to Balmore this, I say, the last 20 years. Right, yeah. Here on Balpass, yeah. Great stuff. So tell us about uh, the sheep behind us here then. Them is six downs. Them is one of the oldest breed of sheep there is. So many sheep would you have then? <laughs> uh, well, I've been 30 altogether, different, three different breeds. Yeah. So how many years have you been coming to the Balmore show then for? Oh, 50 years, maybe more. You must have seen lots of changes from the days in the King's Hall to up here. Changes. I'd rather the old place. Yeah. Up in the King's Hall, I'd rather that. What have you done? You'd rather the King's Hall? Uh, well, it's handy for me. I live about 10 miles away, so it's handy for me. Well, well, 12 miles, Millen Inch. You know, it's handy enough for parking. It's handier here, you know. I see at King's Hall, we had a park. To get the sailor out and go away about a mile and walk it back, you know what I mean? It's a bigger room about here. Yeah. I started to sleep when I was four years old. Yeah? And maybe one night, I still sleep. They bought me one when I was four year old, Larry. Right. And I got up to about 100 years at one stage. You know, that's where I'm going. I, I don't shoot anymore now. Shoot Hampshire Downs. And uh, I don't shoot anymore now, you're a mess bit. But uh, the nice sheep, I do a bit of judging back and forth for them, yes. Hampshire Downs. I say, I'm loving the jacket as well today. Oh, it's good, isn't it? It's good, isn't it? <laughs> it's like something I would wear. You make light colours. Yeah. I love light colours myself. <laughs> <laughs> Even my hair's going light colour now. <laughs> no, I always like light colours. The Downtown Radio Drive Time Show is also coming live from the Balmoral Show today. Neil McClelland is in the hot seat and ready to go. How are you, sir? Very good. I have to say, I'm, I, do you know what I am? What? I'm definitely full up. Yeah. <laughs> the food in the Balmoral Show 2019 is just absolutely incredible. I mean, as soon as you walk through those massive gates, the smell just hits you. Um, it's all about the smiles. We've got the weather, which is great. It's a little bit overcast at the minute, but we can do overcast in Northern Ireland. I mean, we're not Brazil, for goodness sake. Um, but yeah, it's been incredible. The amount of people that are here, um, our position where we are, the, the talent that we've had on stage. Um, Caroline's been on a little bit earlier on. She's just finished. And now I'm just about to go on to Drive Live uh, from the Balmoral Show 2019. So some of this, have you been to the show before? Yeah, I have, yeah. Last year was my first Balmoral Show. Um, and I was blown away. For a boy who's from Glen Gormley that probably never knew what a tractor was until you were stuck behind one at about five mile an hour. Um, and you come here and you think to yourself, my goodness, this is a different world. If you've never, I looked at the camera and say this, if you've never been to the Balmoral Show, if you're a townie or a city boy like me, really do yourself a favour and get down here. Number one, the food. Number two, the people. Number three, the crack. It's just absolutely insane. Have you ever been in a pen with an alpaca? Not recently, but I'm sure we could get that sorted out at some stage. <laughs> you got to do it. I was in there with about five of them 
in a little pen with these most beautiful animals earlier on. You gotta go and see them. I don't even know what an alpaca is. It's like a big kind of grown sheep that looks a bit like a sheep in a giraffe. <laughs> but like you when you're dressed up, dressed up on a night out. <laughs> exactly, right. Have a good show. Lovely, thank you. Emma, so you're just about to go on stage on the downtown radio stage. It's a big stage, isn't it? It is. I'm pretty excited. Actually, just you can see it over my shoulder here. It's so what should we know about you at the minute? What's happening music-wise? It's been a really interesting 12 months for me. So I left my full-time job last January. Last time I was on MVTV, I was talking about opening for Nathan Carter. So that was a great opportunity to try and put my music in front of some like hardcore country fans and see how they'll respond to it. So the last sort of six or seven months, I've just been releasing music putting on a few different shows and just kind of trying to find my fan base. It's it's a long process. Like people do tell you that the music industry is hard, but until you're living it day in, day out, the ups and downs are ridiculous. <laughs> but are you enjoying it? Yeah, absolutely. Living my dream. You know, every every up is worth ten downs, you know? So it's great. Really really going well. I'm writing loads with some incredible songwriters as well and hoping to get back to Nashville this year. So I want the secrets you keep the shine. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a first for NVTV. I can honestly say I've never met an alpaca before, and I'm in a pen here, surrounded by them. They're all ladies, they tell me, and there's a lovely lady at the back called Michelle who's going to come over here and tell me... ...is <laughs> going to tell me all about these lovely animals. I've never seen an alpaca before. Well, there's plenty of them around. There's five in the pen today, and back on the farm we've got a total of 242 of them just wow. outside Dramara. We're the largest pedigree breeding herd in the island of Ireland. Wow, okay. And I'd imagine to own one of these, it must be pretty expensive. Um, it depends on your definition of expensive, to be honest with you. Um, you can have pairs of pets of these home for about £500. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, they're, no, they're not as expensive as people think, but the very important thing to remember is if you bring them home, you need to know how to look after them and you need to know that they're not just a pet for Christmas. They, they live till they're over 20 years of age. So, you know, a wee bit of training that we deliver to all of our club members and everything goes a long way with that as well. They all seem quite nice. They're all kind of posing away for the cameras yes. and stuff. Aren't they? They're very nice. And do they, do they all have names? Ladies, they? every single one of them. This lady who's standing with her bum to you just now is called Chaos, one of our very elite silver grey girls. And she's one of the group that we would call fit to be on the front of Hello Magazine. She's one of those, you know, it's look at me, but don't touch me. All right, because okay. you just cannot afford me. Okay, That's literally right. her story. And does she like to be groomed and pampered, does no, she? No, you don't groom yeah. alpacas. These are pasture ready, show ready. All you have to do, they're on straw, which is unusual. You just take the straw out of their fleece, but you don't brush because you'll pull the integrity out of the fleece right. and destroy the value of okay. it. So who else have we got in there then? Well, I can't tell you the next lady's name because that's the competition on Facebook for the show. Oh, right, Everybody right. has to go onto our page on Facebook and guess her name. It begins with an F and it's related to marriage. So you've got to try and guess her name and you'll win one of our plush alpacas that we sell in aid of the Northern Ireland Children's Hospice. The lady in white next to her is called Divine because that's exactly what her fleece is. It's absolutely divine. It's superb. Next to her is Cassie, who's coming to this summer, one of our little lighter silver greys. And right on the end is Bessie, our brown lady, who's turning three this year. Bessie got a haircut late last night because she couldn't actually see out. But I need to tidy it up because she looks as if she's arrived on a motorbike. She's kind of wearing everything with a bit of a flick, so okay. she still needs a wee bit more of a trim. So now you have to tell me all their names back again. I couldn't possibly remember that. But can people come and visit these animals then? By all means, yes. We do a lot of farm tours. We do a lot of visits. And a lot of those, when people are coming to buy alpacas, all of that side of things, okay, that's a wee bit of the business side. But when people want to come just for a pleasure visit, we ask for a donation for the children's hospice. Sure. And as a family herd, we're just about to hand over a cheque for almost £3,500 wow, for, for last year's yes, activities. Yeah. So for us as a family, it's very important that our children know that whilst they get to enjoy having very different animals like this and we get a fantastic social side for a family from it, we also give a wee bit back as well. Brilliant. So if people want more information, is there like a website they can check out? www.mornalpackers.com So we found the hardest working man at the Balmoral Show, apart from myself of course. It's Kevin McAllister. Tell us, what have you been doing here today? I have been working with Farmweek. 
Uh, I've been talking to lots of lovely people across Northern Ireland here at Balmoral Show on Farm Week. So tell me this, have you been wandering around today? What have you seen? What has caught your eye? I, I saw, first of all, I saw Neil McClellan's legs no. as I came in no. this morning. Not a pretty sight. And after that I saw, I'll tell you what I did see. I saw lots of families. Yes. And isn't that what it's all about? And also, I've been around a lot of the food stalls yes. and some of the produce here in Northern Ireland is just wonderful. Some lovely food here, Robin. Exactly. I'm going to go and check it out in a second. What about the animals? I've seen heifers, I've seen sheep. I've been in a pen with some alpacos earlier on. Well, there was a few bulls running around earlier on. I did notice, I couldn't help, but I did notice quite big bulls uh, in the in the main arena over here. Uh, uh, there's a few horses about and uh, goats. Yes, goats. goats. Uh, I'm, I'm into the goats. Prize-winning chickens as well. Chickens, uh, hens, uh, all sorts of things. Look, you don't know what. Everything's here at Balmoral, just everything. All right, Kevin, enjoy the rest of your time here. I'm going to try. So I can definitely say I can recommend Granny Shaw's Fudge. I've just had a piece, it's amazing. Glenn and Rhonda are the people behind it. Glenn, tell us this, are you having a good day at the Balmoral Show? Having a great day. It's our first time here doing the full four days. Uh, typically we do a, a drop-in day with the council, is that right? They usually support us every year. But we thought we'd take a big leap of faith, four days, and today's been absolutely superb. Yeah. Tell us about some of the unusual flavours you have. Um, what have we got? Chocolate mint, raspberry ripple. Uh, eating mace, ruffle. Mm -hmm. ruffle bounty, fruit salad, which is over there. And of course you have the shop as well in Glen Arm, don't you? Yeah, Glen Arm Castle Estate. Uh, so the home of the shorthorn beef, uh, the salmon that you would see in the shops and the, over in Harrods and further afield, of course, now they have Granny Shaw's Fudge Factory. So maybe we'll be in Harrods next year. Yeah. All right, well, enjoy the rest of your time at the Belmoral Show. Over to see you, Robin. So, is this your first time at the Balmoral Show? No, this is our uh, about sixth time. And we've won four Interbreed Champions. So, we weren't here for the last couple of years, so we're, we're back with a bang. So, That's it looks like a lot of hard work looking after these. I see you're busy uh, brushing away there. Yeah, yeah. Once you have them groomed, it's only about touching them up. Right. It's like going to the hairdresser. <laughs> so, it is. That's what it's all about. So, how much work is involved then in looking after them? Ah, there's a fair bit of work just schooling them and getting them right, you know, and once they're halter trained, they're, 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 they're trained. It's like riding a bike. Once they're trained, they're trained for good. All right. Tell us about this one here, about the breed and stuff. This is a, a Milbrook heifer, and she's out of uh, fantastic uh, bloodlines. She, uh, she's a very good heifer. She's only a January heifer. She's only 15 months. All right. So if you were selling one of these, how much would she be worth? Well, I suppose like when you're selling something like this, it's, it's invaluable to get the breeding. It's the breeding that people will be buying, you know? Yeah. And uh, on the day, listen, she could, she could make any money on the day, you know? So she could, but she wouldn't be for sale. Right, okay, yeah. You know, you sell the likes of that, it's very difficult to breed it. Yeah, yeah. So that's the, that would be the, the whole thing with it, you know? All right, so you've got your little brush thing in your hand there. We have the dog comb. So we have, this is basically just to, 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 to sort of fluff out the hair on the heifer to make her look uh, as wide as, as you can, you know. And we put a bit of limo's shine through the hair as well. It's like somebody going to a wedding, they put moose in their hair, same thing, same idea with a, with a female. So it is with the heifers, so her hair is, is coming out. So there is beauty business involved in the heifers then? Beauty business, and there's a lot of training along go, goes with it. That's what it's all like. So you have, uh, yeah, there is, there is, you need to, be, we, we will be clipping this heifer this morning so that she's completely smooth across her whole top and across her tail head. So there is a lot of, lot of work uh, involved in it, and, and I suppose over the years you get to see the good and the bad points of what you're doing, you know? And she seems to enjoy a bit of pampering as well. She does, yeah, once to train, and she'll listen, everybody loves a, a back scratch. <laughs> so, and she's no different. So long have you been involved in the business for then? Well, I'm only part-time. I'm an auctioneer in Dublin, but my family, brother, has been in it all his life. We've been showing cattle all our life since we're out in Appies. All right. We've yeah. been showing cattle. So, um, and we, we've been uh, entering here for the last 10 years. As I said, we, we've we won uh, four interbreed champions. Uh, with one half from Millbrook Ginger Spice was one of three times, which has never been done wow. in the history yeah. of Almoral, yeah. 
Uh, she was a phenomenal heifer, you know. So we've come back up this year with two two animals, and we uh, we hope to kick hard. Right. Okay. So we'll see how the day goes. Great stuff. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. So just tell us why you guys are here at the Balmoral Show today. Okay, we're a group of farmers from uh, across Northern Ireland, representing all different facets of farming, dairy, sheep, beef, hill, arable. Um, and we feel passionately about the environment and the land that we farm on. And uh, so we are, we are keen to engage with the government, DERA, the department, and with the Arts of Farmers Union to make certain that whatever happens regarding Brexit, whether we leave or whether we don't leave, we know the environmental support to farmers will change. And so we are lobbying very hard to reward farmers more fairly for the good they do for their land, not only on just having land and producing food, but also on looking after the wildlife that they have on their farm. Simon, tell us why you got involved in the group. Yes, yeah, so I suppose I'm a, a larger scale farmer in, in terms of the group, and I think it's important to <laughs> emphasise some of the, the good that, that all farms do, and the environment is what uh, sustains us all in terms of our food and our food production. So I think it's encouraging that message and, and you know, putting forward the views of, of, of all farms and, and being farmer led as an organisation. If anybody out there maybe wants to get involved with you guys, can they do that? Of course they can, very easily. It's completely free to join. Uh, and you just Google NFFN, you get a quarterly email newsletter. Uh, your data is completely secure. And we're a local Northern Irish group of farmers who passionately believe that as farmers, we need to leave room for wildlife. Jonathan, what brings you to the Balmoral Show this year then? Well, it's, it's the first show of the season for, for the family farm. And we've been coming here for years. My father's been here, my grandfather, my great-grandfather. And I know nothing about sheep, but the first thing I notice about these guys behind us here is their ears are very much different from all the rest of them. Well, the board of Leicester is renowned for their, their character, lovely round faces and long ears. And it's, it's part of, the, it's part of the, the, the breed standard. And they're a lovely colour as well, aren't they? Well... We colour them artificially, it's to, it's to emphasise their white heads and their white legs, which again is a characteristic of the breed. So how long does it take to kind of get them ready and to, to put on, on a show? Well, the preparation starts well before Christmas. You pick out your sheep which you think are the best that you have, and they'll be prepared from then. They get extra feeding, extra care and attention. Uh, they're pulled out from the flock, the individuals, and then about a month before it, we start the washing and the trimming and the dipping and the colouring and then just the last week they get the final prepar final touches. It seems like a lot of hard work. Well it's hard work but like I say it's our way of advertising and it's something that we do and you know showing's really a hobby you know and again we're here to promote both ourselves and the breed. So Jackie, Grand Opera House is here today, obviously plugging the shows you have coming up. What have we got to look forward to? Well, at the minute we have Calendar Girls, opened last night, fantastic show, running for another two weeks. Following that, we have uh, Northern Ballet bringing us the classic Victoria, exploring the story of Queen Victoria and her daughter. Uh, and then we go into Girl on a Train, which is going to be amazing. Samantha Womack is starring on that, based on the book. Uh, we then we have a summer full of entertainment, including action abilities, When Will I Be Famous? With me, with me. Rated by yours truly, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, and then we have two summer youth productions with over 230 young people, and they'll be performing in Bugsy Malone and Miss Saigon School Edition. And of course, the sad news is, at the end of the year, you'll be closing for a little while, but the good news is you'll be opening a lot better next year, won't you? Yes, so we close in January as soon as Pantomime is finished, and we close for a period of 10 months. A much-needed restoration to a beautiful building, so we, uh, we're going to uh, restore the auditorium, all the gilding, all the plasterwork, all the paint will all be restored, new seating, new carpets, new heating systems, and the foyer itself will be restored too and completely trans uh, transformed. And then we open again, all being well, 10 months later with Pantomime. Brilliant. All right, so we look forward to that. Jackie, enjoy the rest of your time at the Balmoral Show. Thank you. David, what brings you to the Balmoral Show then? Well, I've been kindly invited by the Society for, I think, the third, third time over a period of years. And each time I come, it, uh, the show appears to be getting better and better and better. So what do you think of the quality of uh, the chickens and stuff that you've Fantastic. seen today? Yeah. Fantastic. I, I believe 
it's as good as you'll see anywhere. They really are great. So what does it take then to become a judge at one of these competitions? Well, probably years of experience. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it for 74 years. Really? Yeah, I started when I was 10 and I'm now 84, coming 85. Wow, okay. so, <laughs> so when you're judging today, what kind of things are you on the lookout for? Well, each breed has a standard of perfection of 100 points. And you have to mentally carry that number in your head. And then when you have the bird in your hand, then you do a quick, you know, yeah. summary. <laughs> <laughs> and all things being even, it works out, and that's the way you do it. Brilliant. So really a serious competition, isn't it? Very, very serious competition. It gets harder as life goes on, you know. The breeds are improving, and then bringing new breeds into the country, as I think possibly the bird that I've made your show champion today is possibly the first time it's ever happened for that particular breed. We're here at the stand A29 at the Balmoral Show uh, to promote the Farmwatch Scheme. Farmwatch Scheme is a unique partnership between the farming community, uh, local police and community safety partnerships and the Police Service of Northern Ireland where we uh, seek to promote the importance of vigilance in the rural communities but also to improve communication between rural communities and the police service. Tell us about some of the steps that people should take to kind of protect their, their farming machinery and the stuff that they own. Well, first of all, we ask uh, uh, people in the rural community to uh, sign up to the FarmWatch um, scheme. Uh, through the FarmWatch uh, scheme, uh, we provide uh, signage for putting at the end of lanes, for putting on farm buildings. Uh, we provide uh, property marking. Uh, we provide a text alert scheme. And uh, we also keep in regular contact with the uh, farming community around what's going on in the, uh, in the local area. So uh, there are lots of really good measures uh, attached to our FarmWatch scheme. And I would encourage uh, the real community and particularly farmers to sign up. We're here today to uh, show the ferrets at uh, the Balmoral Show. They're going out into the arena I believe. Yes we're going to race the children against the ferrets. That's why we've got a large pipe. Adults as well you know they can come in as well and have a race against the ferrets. See if they're faster than a ferret. So how fast can a ferret go then? Um, well we've got ferrets called lightning, flash, so basically, it takes about three weeks to get through one of the shoes with my ferrets. They're useless. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the people always win, oh, right. honestly. So, what about the one you're holding at the minute? This is Snowy. Um, Snowy's a seven-year-old. He's from the black country. This is where I'm from. It's the first time I've ever been in Northern Ireland. I'm loving it and meeting all people and talking about ferrets. Now, there's all different types of ferrets, isn't there? Yes, we've got albinos, polecats, sandies, silvers. There's every type of colour. There's, there's 28 different colours recognised by the National Ferret Welfare, but they're all variants on you know, the polecat, the albino or, or the uh, silver. And can you have ferrets as pets? Yes, all these are pets. Wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm long in the tooth now and I can't do very much ferreting, so all these, all my old working boys, are now all pets. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us about Ferret World, how did all this come about? Oh, I hope Ferret World started because ferrets were getting a bad rap um, right, uh, right at the beginning of the millennium, in 2000. And I've had ferrets all my life, ever since I was nine. And they've always been like this and everybody was, do you remember when Richard Whiteley got bitten? Uh, went ballistic over that and they were getting some bad raps so we decided to go on the road and tell everybody how wonderful these are so do they bite then no you train them not to they are so gentle um, you can't they've got very large teeth in the wild they're known as polecats and they're rat and mouse killers um, but they should be like this they should be just as gentle as uh, a cat or a dog they are a domesticated animal um, they're not a wild animal. They, they've been domesticated for 2,000 years in the United Kingdom. Um, so yeah, we're, you know, they are wonderful pets. We've come to the end of our visit here at the Balmoral Show. What a way to finish with the best view of the whole complex here. And I must say a big, big thank you to Glen Dunn Plant Hire for taking us up in this fabulous crane. So until next year, we'll see you back at uh, the Balmoral Show. And now, 